has the eyes of a warrior. My name is Tai Shu Tzu, loyal warrior of Liu Yao. Lord Sun Tzu, I request a battle with you. Yeah, bring it on! What's going on guys? Welcome back to the uh, channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming in at number 50, the last character in the 50s, we've got Taishi Shi. Taishi Shi was a general of the later Han Dynasty who had been praised for his bravery and courage since his youth. He first served Liu Yao, but after his lord's passing, he surrendered to Sun Se. He allegedly chose Sun Se due to his lord's prowess and mercy demonstrated in their duel. South Side later saw his services after Sun Se's death, yet Taishi Shi remained loyal to Sun Quan. When he passed away, Sun Quan proclaimed utter reverence for his memory. Historically, Taishi Shi was a renowned archer of immeasurable skill, but the Dynasty Warriors games chose to instead depict him as a warrior of profound strength. Before we jump into how Taishi Shi has changed over the past 20 years, let's go ahead and take a look at the popularity polls to see why he's down here at number 50. In the first popularity poll, Taishi Shi receives 597 votes out of a total of 75,000, putting him down at the 52nd spot. In the second popularity poll, Taishi Shi drops all the way down to the 78th spot. And then in my personal rankings, Taishi Shi shoots all the way up to the 14th spot. That's right. He's one of my favorite characters from the Wu Kingdom. And he's actually one of the top five characters for me in the Wu Kingdom. There are four Wu characters above him, but Taishi Shi is number five for me. He's one of the characters that I play um, after I go through my favorite characters with the Wu Kingdom. But I've always liked Taishi Shi. He's been one of my favorites. And uh, as we go through his changes, I'm going to explain why. But before we jump into that, let's talk about Taishi Shi for people who don't know who he is. So Taishi Shi has been in the game since Dynasty Warriors 1. He was part of the original cast of characters and he's been in the game ever since. He's gone through quite a bit of changes. According to the producer, the Dynasty Warriors developers really admired Taishi Shi and they looked up to him as the reliable older brother type and liked the idea of him being in the cast. Taishi Shi is an upright warrior with strong character, striving to live a warrior's life. He searches for ways to improve himself and he feels obligated to return any kindness given to him and will work hard to repay their feelings in kind. So Taishi Shi kind of reminds me of, he's got a similar uh, personality type to that of like Shu Huang of the you know Wei Kingdom and stuff like that. They're like the same character almost. They just have they're just on different sides. He's a very honorable character. He's a very you know he's willing to fight and you know go through the trials and tribulations of proving himself as a profound warrior, no matter the cost, no matter who he's going against, no matter the odds, whether he's at a disadvantage. And that's what I've I've always liked those types of characters. You know he's very humble. He's very you know he'll do what it takes for the better of his kingdom. And uh, when he, you know, when you're first introduced to Taishi Shi and he's on the other team, when you're playing as the Wu Kingdom and Sun Se, you know, he's a very respectable character. And uh, he joined, he ends up joining Sun Se out of respect for him as a ruler. And, and that just helped increase his likability, at least for me. And that's why he's so high up for me. One of the top five characters for me on the Wu side. And uh, I've always enjoyed uh, Taishi Shi as a character. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into how Taishi Shi has changed since the first Dynasty Warriors game. He's been a part of the game since the original game. And uh, we're going to be covering how he's changed from Dynasty Warriors 2 and on. Because Dynasty Warriors 1 was a very different game. Um, it was kind of a Mortal Kombat style type game versus the Battlefield style that it has now. But uh, let's go ahead and start off with Taishi Shi's appearance. This is his appearance throughout the games. And it relatively stays the same. Um, I like the appearance in Dynasty Warriors 5 and in Dynasty Warriors 9. Those are my favorite appearances for Taishi Shi. I didn't have any problems with the other looks that he had. But those were my favorite. Dynasty Wars 5 and Dynasty Wars 9 were my favorite looks for him. And uh, I've always enjoyed playing with Taishi C. Again, one of, my, one of my favorite characters from the Wu Kingdom. And the way he looked never deterred me from playing him. I thought he always looked really cool. Next up, let's talk about his weapon style. And uh, Taishi C only goes through two different weapon changes. And again, uh, kind of like some of the other characters we've already done. In Dynasty Warriors 6, he gets that's the only game he gets a different weapon because of uh, the jump from the new gen console at the time, from the old gen. You know, they had a lot of trouble with it, and a lot of characters got cloned weapons, so uh, unfortunately he got a different weapon in that game, but in every other game, Taishi Shi uses the Twin Rods. That is his signature weapon, and that is what, you know, if you think of the Twin Rods in this game, you think of Taishi Shi. That's what he's known for, and uh, I really enjoyed the weapon style of the, of the Twin Rods. Didn't have anything to complain about it. I mean, you know, it's not the easiest weapon to use, but I enjoyed it. I like to use it. You know, it was a pretty fun style. The Musao attacks were pretty cool, especially later on in the series. Um, they got better and better, but I don't have anything against them, and uh, I always enjoy playing through them with uh, Taishi C. Yeah, it's just the character, just the whole character in himself. He's just he's a very formidable character. He's got that you know persona, that aura of you know very strong type. You know that's and that's a, that's exactly what they wanted with Taishi C. That profound strength. You can really see that with his weapon style, the way he fights, and of course with his appearance and everything like that. But in Dynasty Warriors Six, he gets the Trident. 
So that is a cloned weapon that a lot of characters, unfortunately, were uh, given in that game. And uh, it's it's all right. It wasn't the greatest you know, weapon or anything like that. I actually liked it. Like Out of the cloned weapons, it's probably one of my favorites. Um, a lot of other characters got that weapon, including Sun Se, and I think Ma Chao actually got it as well, which is tragic, and we'll cover that once we get to them. But um, I didn't have anything too much to complain about. It Just the clone weapon kind of sucks. But other than that, not much to really complain about with his weapon style. I, I enjoyed it pretty much um, throughout the entire series. All right, next up, we have probably the most prominent part of the character, at least to me personally. This is probably why he's so high up. Again, with the weapon style, with the appearance, and then with this part, uh, just all in together, um, this made the character whole. And that's his voice acting. So this is probably, he's probably the character. He's probably the reason why I have a voice acting segment on my character analysis series. Because Taishi Shi, when I was using or getting used to like, you know, using Taishi Shi and enjoying playing him, it was in Dynasty Warriors 5. Again, he had the best. That was my favorite Taishi Shi look that he had his twin rods. But his voice acting in that game, I believe he had the same one in Dynasty Warriors 4, but I didn't really play Dynasty Warriors 4 that much. Dynasty Warriors 5, he had the best voice actor I've ever heard in this game. Lord Sunsei and I shared a dream. I ask now that you make that dream come true. He has probably, behind, maybe behind a couple of other characters that we'll get to a little later, maybe like Cao Cao and like maybe Zhao Yun. Um, but actually, fun fact, the person that voiced Taishi Shi in Dynasty Warriors 5 also did Zhao Yun. All of that is in the past. What will our Lord and his title of King mean today? We'll revisit that once we get to Zhao Yun as well, but um, his voice acting in Dynasty Wars 5, I really, really enjoy. It was a very unique sound, and I always enjoyed the way he talked. It was like, it just added that strength, that intimidation, that, you know, that persona of strength, and I love the way he sounded in Dynasty Wars 5. It was so tragic when he went from Dynasty Wars 5 to Dynasty Wars 6, and they changed his voice. Another fortress falls before my might. It didn't sound as cool as it used to be, and again, I was a kid when Dynasty Wars 5 came out. I was a young kid. And uh, that, his voice is what drew me to him, and that's what made me want to play him. His look was cool, and I was like, wow, that's a really cool character. But I actually like his voice in Dynasty Warriors 9. They kind of go back to that root of the Dynasty Warriors 5, that low, kind of intimidating voice that I enjoyed. That is what gives us our strength. We can then call upon that strength to guide you forward. Um, I really enjoyed his Dynasty War. That He is the main reason why I had a voice acting segment. When I started this series and I was thinking about the voice acting, he was the person I was thinking about because when he changed his voice, I was like, what happened? His Dynasty Warriors 5 voice actor was probably the best one that I've heard. I don't have really much to complain about with the voice actor he has now. I didn't, you know, the ones that were replacing the Dynasty Wars 5 one, they weren't bad. They just, in comparison to that one, they weren't as good. So there's nothing wrong with those voice acting. I just think that after hearing that and then going into the new ones, it was kind of like, eh, you know, that Dynasty Wars 5 one was really the epitome of that character and I really enjoyed his voice acting in that game. Now finally moving on to his relationships, his most significant battles and his death. We're going to start off with his relationships because his significant battle and death kind of go hand in hand at least in the game. So we're going to go ahead and talk about his relationship. The biggest relationship that Taishi Shi had is going to be with Sunsei. Sunsei is a guy that recruits him. Sunsei is a guy that fights him and you know Taishi Shi recognizes his ability and of course Sunsei recognizes his ability as well and actually wants him to join him and that's pretty much what happens within the series you know they have a very close relationship all the way up until Sunsei's death and even after Sunsei passes away Taishi Shi decides to serve Sun Quan and stay with the Wu Kingdom but he had a very close relationship with Sunsei he really enjoyed the way he you know led his kingdom and the way he you know the passion that he had for building a kingdom Taishi Shi was drawn to that and really admired Sunsei for his passion and his compassion for his teammates and there's a lot of cutscenes revolved around that between the, you know, Taishi Shi and Sunsei, their friendship when Sunsei passes away. Taishi Shi being there, you know, looking up to the heavens, talking to him and stuff like that. Very, very close relationship. That's the biggest one he had in the game. And then I think the smaller relationships he had, he had a relationship with all the other officers as well. There's actually a point in the game uh, in Dynasty Warriors 9 when he's like, you know what, we all are friends and I enjoy fighting with you guys. It's been a journey, whatever it is. It may be somewhat embarrassing to hear it put into words like that. However, we are all friends here. We may have different thoughts and have different goals, but we accept each other as fellow bannermen of who? It's right before the battle that he passes away that he gets killed in, but he's talking about how he's enjoyed his, you know, his time and, you know, that he's really made a lot of good friends within the kingdom and stuff like that. But I think the other two main, or at least small relationships he had is with Sun Quan and with Zhou Yu. Of course, he's going to have that relationship with Sun Quan because Sun Quan's now the new leader. He decides to stay and support and help 
you know, Sun Quan because he's trying to accomplish the dream that Sun Se was trying to, you know, reach and stuff like that. So Tai Chi Si admires that about him. He wants to be a part of that. He wants to see that dream, even though Sun Se is not here. He wants to see that dream come to life and he wants to be a part of that. And then, of course, with Zhou Yu, uh, Zhou Yu's significance, his role in the kingdom, that's what leads to the relationship. They don't have a super close relationship, but he has a respect for him when Zhou Yu passes away. It's evident within a few of the uh, events in Dynasty Warriors 9, he's talking about it, Zhou Yu, you know, hope you know, hope you can see that we're doing well, whatever it is, and uh, he had that respect for him, and Zhou Yu respected Tai Chi Shi as well. A lot of the officers relied on Tai Chi Shi with his strength, because that's what he was really built for in the game, like I've already mentioned before, but um, now let's talk about his most significant battle and his death. So the most significant battle he's going to have is the Battle of Hei Fei. He participated in a bunch of battles before that, but Hei Fei is the biggest battle because it's the one that he dies in. Historically, he does not die in battle. I believe he dies of illness or uh, something happens and he passes away a little earlier than the Battle of Hei Fei, but the game makes him die at Hei Fei. He gets killed in battle by Zhang Liao, and that's how he kind of, you know, is remembered in the game. I believe the only game that covers it is Dynasty Warriors 3, at least explicitly, right? Dynasty Warriors 9, um, he kind of gets the lame death, so like he kind of just like falls over and passes away kind of thing, and doesn't really get that but in dynasty warriors 3 he actually gets riddled with arrows as he's trying to escape from zhang liao's ambush or whatever it is he gets killed he's you know he gets unfortunately gets killed at hafei and that's pretty much that's his most significant battle in the dynasty warriors series because of course after he passes away soon kwan was devastated you know anyone gan ni you know people around the wu kingdom were devastated to lose such a profound warrior as tai chi shi he had a lot of accolades within that kingdom so and a very talented general he was very skilled even though the games pushed him to be more of a strength-based character historically he was known for his archery and uh, losing someone of that skill regardless if it's of the archery or if it's the strength always a big blow to a kingdom but um that's pretty much all i have for tai chi shi here tai chi shi again one of my favorite characters from the wu kingdom top five hands down according to my list i'm looking at it and he's top five for me i've always enjoyed uh, his weapon style, the way he looks, but the main draw for me for the character is his voice acting in Dynasty Warriors 5. As soon as I heard his voice in Dynasty Warriors 5, I was like, whoa, that's a really cool sounding character. You know, he sounds really cool. Let me play him. Let me see what he's about. And I ended up loving the character. He's one of my favorites from the Wu Kingdom, and he probably will remain one of my favorites from the Wu Kingdom. I like what he represents. I like him as, you know, a character. Again, those types of like, you know, he's willing to do whatever it takes for his kingdom, but he's not arrogant. He's not like negative about anything. He's at a disadvantage. He's going to fight through it. He's a warrior. And that's what I really like about Tai Chi Si. And I really like that they built that warrior persona around him. And that's why he's one of my favorites from the Wu Kingdom. But again, that's all I have for Tai Chi Si. Uh, let me know. What you guys think about him, if you guys play him, or if you guys like him as much as I do. I've always enjoyed Tai Chi Si. Um, but that's all I have for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're out of the 50s. We're going into the 40s now. We're almost at the top half of the list. We're getting to the more popular characters, and I'm excited to get there. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, definitely appreciate sure like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. So long,